My name is Julia Silge and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today in this screencast, we're gonna use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set on um, the artwork in the Tate collection. And we're going to train um, a regularized regression model using text data to understand the relationship between um, the, the media that the artwork are created with, like um, oil paint or, or um, pencil on, on paper or canvas and um, how that changes over time um, with the um, like when the artwork was created. Um, let's get started. Okay, let's learn something about the this art collection from the the Tate galleries. So um, I have let's let's read in this um, data set. So there's actually two data sets in the um, this Tidy Tuesday um, uh, week. Um, one is what I'm using here, which is the artwork, and the other is the artist. So you can actually join them together and learn more, or you know, spend time looking at the. Um, at the at the artists and I am actually particularly interested here in the artwork because what caught my eye when I looked at um, this week's um, Tidy Tuesday is actually um, uh, this column, the column that is the um, the medium. So because this column is. Um, um, it's a text column, but actually it's really short text, and um, it is not, uh, um, let's see, if we, let me set up a little thing here. So if we were to look at, um, uh, let's see, let's call this artwork, and then if I count, um, oh, I'll do it over here, artwork, and if I say count medium sort equals true, if I have what I have here, it's first of all, there's missing data. I have missing data here. And then what I also have is um, um, a lot of different ways that these are described. Um, you know, graphite on paper is the most common, but then we have oil paintings, screen prints, lithographs, but then we have things like graphite and watercolor on paper. You know, so we have a lot of different ways of combining this. So this is very short, so this is text, but it's very short text. And I think this is a very interesting, um, uh, li like little data set um, to, I mean, it's not a little data set. We've got, you know, we've got quite a number of rows here, but like an interesting way to kind of explore what it is it that we can learn when we look at text data. Um, and, and one thing that I think would be interesting to look at is how the, this, the, the media, like the art media that um, artists used changed, or at least the ones that ended up in the Tate collection. So let's um, let's look here at that distribution over time, and I um, I actually this week uh, um, I already looked at this, and I uh, so I know what this is going to look like, and I put. Um, because boy, look at that. Look at that distribution. So um, that is a pretty interesting bimodal distribution here, right? So this is the date. If you look at the, you know, kind of the info on what data is in here, we, we have two different dates in there. One of those dates was the date at which it was, um, if we go back over here, one of these is the date that it was acquired that is the acquisition year. And this is the date at which it was created. So first of all, there's again, there's a lot of NAs, like there's a lot, we don't know what it is, but then also there's a lot of, um, there's a lot, there's this very interesting distribution that we have here. Um, so what, what could explain this? Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't pretend to have like the, um, d you know, d definitive answer for why the Tate collection has, you know, a huge number of pieces of art from this period 
and then a lot from this, you know, very, um, you know, this more modern art, but, um, you know, the Tate, there's like the Tate Modern um, in London, and then this, you know, there's another um, Tate uh, gallery, and so like that has different focus. So like the the ways that the um, galleries um, chose to build the collection, like what their focus was, um, could have contributed to this. Um, when uh, you know, like when they had money to be able to acquire art, that could have contributed to this. Like there's lots of different. Um, things that could contribute to it. Um, so if I want to understand the relationship between um, the media, like what kind of different art media people use and um, uh, this and this, then like this is basically my outcome. Like this is the thing that I want to understand and to predict. And that distribution is pretty wacky. That distribution is pretty wacky. I asked on um, Twitter um, earlier this week, what would people do? What do they think would be the best thing to do if they had a distribution like this that they wanted to um, predict? Um, would they try to maybe, you know, like put a line right here and uh, you know, predict old versus new? Would they just say, you know what, what matters? It doesn't matter if it's normal, like what matters? And there's, you know, there's papers about this, how the, like the distribution of the outcomes doesn't matter. What um, it matters is the distribution of the residuals. Would they, you know, what would they, what would they try to do? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, you know, one of the more simple options and treat this as our, um, as our outcome of the year. And what we're going to treat as our features are the text features in this medium um, column. So, and we're going to see how that goes. And we're going to actually look at the residuals and say, well, was that a reasonable thing to do? Um, is, uh, um, what, what do we see at the end there? So let's say what we, let's build a little data set here that we're going to use for this. So we're going to take this artwork. Um, let's, let's give ourselves at least a fighting chance on this distribution and let's filter out those really old ones. So let's filter year. Um, let's filter. So we've uh, just got that things after 1750. Let's take year and medium. So we're only going to deal with these two columns. Um, let's keep uh, uh, keep artwork when we where we know both of those. And uh, let's let's just arrange by year so I can have that in order. And let's call this um, a Tate DF because let's keep in mind this is a very specific. Um, data set that was created has very certain biases. You know, this becomes very clear when you look at this, right? Like this is not a distribution of art overall. This is a distribution of art acquired, created and acquired in with very certain biases. So oil paint on canvas, oil paint on canvas, etching and engraving on paper. These are the oldest things we have. And if we looked at, um, if we looked at the newest things we have, you know, uh, rubber inner tubes, steel, hose pipes, and ribbon, and 21 aluminum bricks. So, you know, so these are very modern things that we have. So there's definitely, I believe, I am guessing there's going to be very different things at the beginning near the end here. Um, just so we can get an idea of what the most common um, uh, uh, art media are here, let us take this, let's do unnest tokens, and let's unnest into word from medium, and then let's count word sort equals true. So we can see what the most common words are. So we've got um, on, paper, graphite, water, color, paint, oil, canvas, screen print, lithograph. So these are like the most common words in this medium that we have. Okay, let's go straight and to building our model. So we're gonna build, we're gonna um, use tidy models to do this. So let's load tidy models. And let's first, um, we, are, we have a lot of data here. So we are gonna split into testing and training. And we are, let's call it art 
split, initial split. So let's call it TDF, and let's um, we can stratify by year. So that means we're going to use the quantiles of the um, of year to stratify, um, and then let's make art. Let me put this. It's not way down at the bottom of the screen. So art train training art split art test testing art split so this is now training and testing and then we're also going to make um, some resamples that we're going to use for um, tuning and evaluating performance of our of our model so let's call this art folds and let's use a v-fold cross-validation for this. So we, we resample the training data. That's what we use for um, tuning and um, uh, estimating performance from the training data. So uh, folds there. So we have, now we have training data, testing data, and resample training data to use for um, tuning and choosing models. Then, uh, so next, let's get started with um, uh, pre-processing our data. So this is, we have, uh, here, I guess I never really showed what we, what it looks like. So this is our, this is our training data that we have here. We, you know, we still have quite a lot of data. Notice that, so in our resampled data, um, we have 10 cross-validation splits and each one of these splits, this is how much data we will use for um, fitting for training, this is what we call the analysis set. And then this is how much data we have within each fold for um, for uh, what we would call um, the, uh, the analog, the, what's analogous to testing, what we call the assessment set. So, in, so we have 10 folds of that that have um, th that much data. So this is quite a lot of data, which is nice. Um, we are not hurting for data here, so that's certainly not going to be the issue. Um, Let's load, we're going to load text recipes, which has um, recipe steps for um, pre-processing text. So we're going to say, our, in our recipe, we're going to say we're going to explain year. Year is our um, outcome. We're going to, and the, our features are coming from medium, this, uh, the art medium that each artwork is created with. And then our training data is art train. So that what this tells us in the recipe is what are the columns that we are dealing with. And now we can start um, building up our, our feature engineering um, uh, recipe that we can apply to, um, that we can learn from the training data and then apply to other data like testing data or new data. So the first thing we'll do is um, tokenize the data the text data. Um, let's remove stop words. There aren't actually a ton, but I'm not that interested actually in on and 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 whatnot. So let's remove them um, there. Um, let's put a, a token filter on medium. And so what this does is we say, um, I, I don't want to keep every single you know, this is all the words that were are in here. And um, that's a lot of features. Like if I kept everything, that would mean I would have 1,463 features and I don't want to keep that many features as I go to train my model. Instead, I'm just going to keep the top 500 words after removing stop words. That's a pretty good um, default um, for a lot of situations. I am going, I could now, as I transform this into a matrix to use for modeling, I could, um, weight this by the counts, but a good default, um, you know, is to actually weight by um, the TFIDF. Um, these are really short words, uh, really short. So TFIDF, I don't know, actually, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just do, maybe I'll just do this because they're so short, actually, that um, uh, I, TFIDF does work with short documents, but let's just actually use the counts. Let's just use the counts here. So we're going to do um, t uh, step um, term frequency for medium. And then um, I am going to, um, oh, I have to normalize because I'm about to use a um, regularized regression. So I will normalize all predictors like so. And so this actually normalizes the um, counts 
so they're all on the same scale. So this is a feature pre-processing um, recipe for this data set of text here. So these are all the steps that we need to do so that we can take something that looks like this and convert it to something that the um, that um, that uh, the, the model can train on. So that's the feature preprocessing step. Now let's make um, a model. So we're going to do um, a good default model to go with for text is um, regularized regression, lasso regression. I'm going to do, um, I am going to do um, lasso. So I'm going to tune the penalty and I'm just going to keep the mixture at one so that I can set some of these words to zero and say, just throw them out and say, I don't, I don't want them anymore. I'm going to set the engine to, um, Glimnet or GLMnet, however you prefer to say that. And then I'm going to set up a workflow. And I am going to, um, first I will add the recipe. And the recipe is called Art Rec. And then I will add the model. And it's called Lasso Spec, like this. And it is now, um, it is now a workflow. Um, actually, yes. Okay. So actually, um, I can maybe use this as an opportunity to um, talk about the the blueprint. We recently added um, we recently added support for um, for sparse data here. So if I can add, so if I call a sparse, I can make a sparse blueprint. So hard hat default recipe blueprint with composition equals. And then if the composition I make, um, as this, this sparse matrix thing that I have over here. And then I can say add recipe blueprint equals sparse blueprint like this. And then if I, I need something that can just be sparse like this. So this will have zeros in it. And so what this does is it will actually pass a sparse matrix into, um, into um, GLMnet, and it will um, it will stay sparse throughout the whole fitting, and that will um, um, uh, uh, actually train a lot faster because GLMnet is something that uh, trains faster with sparse data, um, it w which is great to be able to do that. All right, so let's set up. Um, my parallel background. Let's set up a grid of um, possible penalties to try. Um, let's try um, 20 values. And you know, penalty, it, it goes really small. And I don't want to go quite that small. I don't think it's going to need. So instead of minus 10, to zero, let's try like minus three to zero like this. So what that, instead of the default, which goes super tiny, like if you use the default, it goes super tiny. So the way to change that is to change the range in this way. If we wanted to pipe it, I could have, but. Um, so now this makes a, um, a, a range that doesn't go quite as small. So let's do that. And now let's, um, let's tune, let's just tune um, a grid, just tune on this grid that we made. So we, we, we do the, um, our, the workflow, we do, we send in the resamples, um, and our resamples are called artfolds. And then let's send in the grid here, like so, and let's call this lasso results, like so. Okay, now, is this ready to go? I believe it is. Um, it is loaded, GLMnet is now training. So now what it's doing is for every, um, so for every, is it done? Yes, it's done. So that went quite fast, both because 
Um, it's a linear model. We use sparse, the sparse um, representation. So what it did was for every, well, it'll just show us uh, lasso. So for every um, split, for every um, uh, fold, it trained um, it trained every uh, one of those 20 um, possible values for lambda. All right, so we did it. We trained them. So we have, let's, so now let's see, let's see how this went. So this is a linear model, and that, so that means that uh, that is important to keep in mind as to what we just learned. So we basically are about to see and understand, hey, when we have that kind of, you know, very unusual, um, distribution that we had for the outcome, and we just are pushing forward with regression. Um, was it okay what we did? Um, what can we learn here? So let's look at um, the results. What do we see? Okay, so this looks pretty good. So uh, we have RMSE and R squared. So it looks like it's kind of flat. It goes up a smidge. So the best value is going to be, you know, like right in this range right here. So we can we can say show best lasso results. Uh, we can say like find the best RMSE here. So that's yeah, that's like you know, right in here or we, where we're having these best values for um, the RMSE. So R squared, the best ones are, it's like point, point 0.77. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's not great. Um, you know, that, that tells you how well the data, the model is fitting the data. Like how well can we predict the year of a, um, of a artwork based on the medium like the art uh, media that was used. And then the RMSC, like that's in the units of the original um, predictor. So this is in the units of years. So we can predict this to like 30 years. The, R, the root mean squared error is 34-ish years or whatever. So that's what we're, um, the mean is, th is um, 34 years. So that's what we're getting there for our results. So let's um, let's pick, let's get that best value out. So let's call best RMSE, uh, let's say select best lasso, uh, whoops, what am I doing? RMSE. So we can do best. We also, I mean, just so you know, you can say um, and you might want to do this with a lasso model. You can say you don't have to s select the best one. You can also select by one um, uh, standard error, like if you would like a simpler model, which you might with something like lasso, you might want to pick a slightly simpler model. And now we say, um, let's say final lasso, and we will finalize the workflow. So we have our workflow, which remember had it said tune, penalty equals tune, and now we put, instead of um, putting, uh, instead of having penalty equals tune, now it will have penalty equals the thing that we said was the best. Okay, so now we have, we have chosen the value for penalty we're going to use. So now let's fit it one more time. So we're fitting now our finalized workflow, and let's let's send it the split. So now what this will do? Let's call this let's call this art final. So now what this will do is it will fit one time to the training data and evaluate one time on the um, testing data. And so what we can do things like collect metrics on this and so what the metrics that we're seeing here are on the testing data not on the training data and so we can see we see about the same rmsc about the same r squared so we've not um overfit um so that is good and now we can start to do some quite interesting things as we evaluate and say what 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 do we think about this model is it good or bad or can we learn something from it um, even if it is bad. Um, the first thing I want to do is um, look at variable importance. Uh, for a linear model, this is, you know, variable importance is just the coefficients, but the VIP package has some very convenient functions for getting that out. So if we take the final 
lasso and uh we're actually going to fit it um one more time i wonder if there's a way to get it out maybe if we get if we take if we take art final the workflow and if we if we pull the workflow fit out of this does this work yes so we can, we don't have to fit it again. We can, because it already has been fit in last fit. And then we can say VI, and let's call this art VIP. So this is the variable importance right here. So art VIP. So VI is a function from the VIP package. And so what this is telling us is the variable importance for those 500 features that we um, made, that we picked when we said max tokens equals 500. How many will we keep in our, in our recipe? So um, now let's um, make, so this is, so this, how is this arranged right now? So our VIP, we can arrange um, by importance. Oh, that's by, so these, those zeros, those are the things that got um, taken out. Um, <laughs> beans. <laughs> boxes. So these are the things that, you know, the um, regularization uh, set to zero, that it could not buy, buy its way in to the, um, to the model. So these are the things with the most importance. Um, graphite, paper, ballpoint, watercolor, plates, uh, so, and whatnot. Okay, so let's, um, let's take this, let's group by the sign, because some things are positive and some things are negative. Some things are more towards new art and some things are more towards old art. Let's slice max. And so what we're gonna order by there is the absolute value of importance. And let's keep, um, let's keep 20 on either side here. So now we have 40 instead of 500 and we can make like a, a nice little graph. So let's mutate some of these things. So let's say variable, let's remove um, from variable all this for making our graph. Let us, um, uh, importance, let's um, make that equal to the absolute value of importance because there are negative numbers in there and I want to plot them all in, the, in just their absolute value. Let us, um, oh yeah, let's, let's do variable equals fact reorder. Uh, this will need to come after variable fact reorder, not recode, reorder, variable importance. Um, and let's, let's, let's clarify what this sign is. So when sign, or it could be, it could be if else, because there's only two of them, if else. So when, if sign is equal to pause, then it's more in later art and else it's more in earlier art like this. All right, so let's make sure that runs. Okay, great. And now we could save that or we can just pipe it straight to a plot. So um, what goes on the x-axis? Importance. What goes on the y-axis? The variable. Let's uh, make fill equal to sign. Let's make a little bars. Let us, and then facet by sign. Let's see how that turns out. Nice, okay, so we need to do scales equals free. I think just free. Um, we don't need that legend. And we do not need that label. Okay, very nice. All right, so let's look at this. 
Okay, so in earlier art, people were more <laughs> likely to use um, graphite, paper, pen, oil, um, paint, watercolors, engraving, intaglio, mahogany. In later art, people were more likely to use dung and photographs and <laughs> coffee and glitter. So I'd say this is a success. <laughs> Gosh, I just love text analysis. Honestly, honestly, I love it. Oh, could not be happier about this. Okay. Um, Perfect. I love it. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. So, so modern art is amazing and I love it and I need to see more art with glitter. I haven't been in a museum in so long. <sighs> I'm sad. Okay. This is fantastic. All right. So, um, th so this is, this is the which features push the predictions more in one direction or the other. Um, but we also can measure how well the predictions do. So let's um, uh, do use collect predictions um, on Art Final. And so what this is doing, um, if, so if we run this, what it gives us is for the, so this is again, this is for the testing set, the, um, the predicted date and the real date predicted date, real date. So we can make a plot where we say um, the real date, the predicted date, and then let's set this up. Um, let's put, you know, let's put our friend, the, um, the, um, wa the slope equals one line on here. Let's make it gray. Let's make it a little bit thick and let's put the now let's put these on as points so let's make them um, a little bit trans probably a lot transparent there's a lot of points on here and colorful and probably a chord fixed is going to be helpful here okay let's make these little bit bigger that will help I think okay okay this is super interesting S super super interesting so what is happening here is that um, uh, we've got these clumps we've got these clumps so over he up here in like this new art we see we have things that are um, we have these things we have these things that are being predicted um, well um, uh, they're close to the line because they're being predicted well these are the things made with glitter and photographs and coffee and dung. Um, we have these things that are um, predicted well that are really old, um, but notice that it spreads, you know, it just spreads up, right? So some newer art also uses these old, um, uh, these media that are, were, that are largely used uh, in the old as well. Although we kind of get that going both ways, but look at this, this line here that's basically in the middle. I mean, that might just be literally the, <laughs> the mean or, or median or something of the whole data set. Something is just being predicted in the middle of the whole thing all the time, and it's just wrong all the time. It's just wrong. So that's the predicted value. Notice it could come at any time. That's probably the most common, um, the most common uh, me medium, like something media, something like oil, oil paints, something like paper that um, uh, just can be anywhere. And so we don't have, it's, it's not very predictive. It's not, um, uh, it just, it just goes to the middle. So those predictions are just wrong all the time. So we can look and see what are those, you know, like look at the most misclassified um, options. We can do that by say, let's say collect collect predictions on art final and we can bind this to um, like all we want is that medium column like this 
whoops, select medium like this. So now we, we've just, we've just, you know, stuck them together. So we have, um, so this is a testing data like so, and we can, um, let's filter for the most uh, misclassified ones. So where the, let's say where the um, absolute value of the year minus the prediction is greater than 100, where it's like more than 100 years off in its misclassification misclassified. Okay, so, so there's 400 that were that misclassified. Um, okay, so here are the new, here are the new ones, the new ones. Um, uh, so oil paint, uh, mesotint on paper, um, etching. So these are new things that were predicted to be old. Um, so these are, you know, old uh, art. These are old um, techniques that were that were used in recent years, and so they were predicted to be old. At least things that existed a long time ago. So here are things that were old, but were predicted to be medium. So look, oil paint on canvas, oil paint on canvas, oil paint on, so this oil paint on canvas is always predicted to be 1898. So this is how a linear model works. And a linear text model just, you know, adds together the prediction, the, you know, the, um, like how much is oil worth? How much is paint worth? How much is canvas work? And where does it land you? And so oil paint on canvas, what, you know, was, you know, one of the most common, media and so it just lands you in the middle like the middle of the whole distribution um so that's that's i, I actually am loving how this is turning out because it really explains how um how linear models work with text i mean often they're a great option but it, we can really see um how they do and don't um work well so in these misclassified i mean um uh, art works. What are the most common things? And pretty much the same as, you know, the, the overall paper, graphite, etching, canvas, water, watercolor. It's, it, we got about the same things. Okay, the last thing I want to do is look at um, the residuals. So we can get the residuals from art final via the augment. Um, uh, uh, verb, the augment function. So we have, this is the, this is the testing data. So we, this art final is, um, the thing that we did, la we, this is the output of last fit. So we can get the, um, uh, the residuals here. So we have the true year, the predicted year, and the residual. And we actually have the, um, the feature here that we use. And so we could do, you know, lots of different things here to understand this. Let's just make, let's just make a pretty straightforward residual plot. Predicted, residual, what residual. And let's make, let's put a um, horizontal line at um, y intercept equals zero. Let's put the same kind of line as what we had here. Let us put the same kind of points as we had here. And then we can, um, let's put a smoother on there and see how this goes. So let's look at what we've got here. Okay. So residual plot, there we go. Okay, so um, we definitely see heteroscedasticity. I don't know, how, how do you think I did on that? <laughs> I'm not going to try to say it again. Um, um, so the the uh, there is more variance in the residuals. Um, you know, I would say at medium to low uh, years, 
and not very much at high years. And so in like in the modern art, um, when we predict a, a, a modern, a new year, um, it is likely to be a new year. Uh, like a, a, a recent year. So we have, when we have things like glitter or dung, it is likely to be a new year. However, the um, if we have something like oil paint on canvas, um, uh, we don't we don't really like that's not um, it's not very specific or predictive, and so we do not we have a high variance there in our residuals. So um, this plot helps us understand when we are. Um, have uh, residuals that are low and when we have residuals that are broad and also that the middle, the, those predictions in the middle are wrong both high and low, but the residuals at low, at early years are only low to the high direction, at least the way that we filtered our data. And, but the residuals at the recent years are, um, are, are, are much tighter. All right, so um, we created a model using this um, data set from, of artwork from the Tate Collection, and then we, um, um, we evaluated that model using uh, model diagnostics like the residuals. So is this model good or bad? Is this a terrible model? Um, I, I would probably say for most purposes, um, this model did not turn out great. You know, when we look at the, um, the, the graph where we look at predicted versus real um, true values of the year, or we look at the residuals plot, it did not, though that's not a sign of a really um, well-performing model. But it is interesting to think about how much we learned about um, uh, the, the the media that are used to create these artwork and how that changed over time, even with this model that did not have the best properties. So thanks so much, and um, I'll see you next time.